Welcome on the Attitude Gaming channel. My name is Ralph and Bradford is back. Yes, after a long, long time, but I thought it was only fitting that this save that started uh, on YouTube should end on YouTube. But before we start with the live games, I have to update you guys on how the save is going because I was playing meanwhile. So in this episode, we will go through the rest of the first season and half of the second one. And at the end, we will start with the first live game. Don't worry, I will stop playing all of these games myself and you can check out an extra sheet uh, with all the details about the team and the team stats in the description below. So right after the last episode of the series, we entered a pretty big slump. We lost uh, three games out of four and lost on penalties to West Ham in League Cup, which was in a crazy, crazy match. We were losing 5-2 uh, at half time, but uh, our exciting prospect uh, O'Grady came on and scored two goals. Uh, but sadly then he missed the penalty. And after that match we drew another six games in a row and five of those were 1-1. One, one, which got me really question if my game is okay. <laughs> We had problems especially in the center of the pitch since we were playing 4-4-2 uh, up until then and also our second striker uh, at the time Charles Abbey kind of failed, was pretty invisible in the position and we didn't have anyone else who could play there well. So we transitioned into a 4-2-3-1 formation which helped a lot actually right from the start, especially thanks to Omari Patrick who saved us several games coming from the bench with his pace. But even though we beat the first team Colchester twice in the month, in the second match two people got injured. One was Patrick and second was Van Hau who got injured for seven months at the time our most reliable centre back. And later Chung who stepped up also got injured. All these injuries and fixture congestion meant that uh, in the match that we had on the 1st of January Bradford had to call up four youngsters to even fill the team uh, and bench with enough to play but luckily these youngsters delivered and uh, it was pretty important victory that kept us in the upper half of the table and started pretty long winning streak in the league and I'm saying in the league because uh, we met Liverpool in the FA Cup and that didn't go well for us we got absolutely smacked 8 and 0 at the end field. So Liverpool are for sure on the hit list for this series. We had zero money also, so no one was bought in the winter. And so we continued on, on our streak throughout February, including playing uh, Newport County twice in a row, which is pretty funny. The first loss of 2020 in the league came for us on the 17th of March against Port Vale and we were steadily climbing up uh, up until then, I think as high as 2nd place at one point but with the loss came other 4 draws out of 6 matches most likely because our Cam and Mecca and Tai Chung both got injured again <laughs> so to secure automatic promotion we needed to win the last 3 games of the season which we couldn't we lost 0-4 uh, to 19th Crew Alexander at home even I also lost the last match of the season <laughs> to Walsall at home uh, so really not good performance there so pretty tough season uh, to what I'm used to in FIFA this was my first playoffs and I was kind of spooked because I, I really didn't want to play in League 2 again our semi-final opponent was Crowley Town the first game was pretty tough but ended 1-1 uh, thanks to a goal uh, from a right back Riley but we got through the reverse fixture quite easily with two penalties both scored by Vaughan uh, so we're on to Wembley to meet none other than Port Vale to most of you and a great day for our football match today Martin Tyler here along with Alan Smith great to have you along with us Martin Tyler here with Alan Smith terrific action in prospect it is the promotion playoff final I think we're both really looking forward to this Alan well a chance for any one of these players to be the hero of the day they would have been thinking about that possibility in the days leading up to this match this is where dreams can be made James Vaughan and number 14, Shay McCartan. Here's the lineup.
Yes, that Port Vale that gave us uh, the first league loss of 2020. But in this game, there were no match for us. With great performance by, by Chung coming from the bench. Clearly, the Bedford players knew there is only one outcome to this game, and that is us getting the trophy, and so we did. He wants to run at them with the ball, it's good to see. Opportunity now! Top performance from a top team, and they've emphasised their superiority with the number of goals that they've scored. And here he goes, it's good to see him. Our oh, chance! Put into the middle. Well, this is what it is all about. And you've been there up on podiums like this to get your reward. Great sense of togetherness. Well, I think there is within this team particularly. Those are the messages you hear coming out of the dressing room. They do stick together when times are hard. And... For the souvenirs. Small trinkets, really but they mean so much. Well, there's only so many trophies on offer during the course of the season. And that's why it does mean so much for any footballer to be in this position, to, to be on that podium. Wonderful stuff. It's such a fantastic feeling to win any football match, but to win one when there's major sim as well, Martin. In fact, they played well over the course of the final, that 90 minutes when they really did have to show what they've got, they responded to the challenge and that makes it all the more satisfying. Well, it's quite a scene here. And suddenly, having looked tired towards the end of the game, they found remarkable energy. Yeah, they'll keep going all night now, I'm sure of that. The adrenaline will be pumping. Great team, great result. Oh, what a moment to be pictured here as cup winners. Sensational achievement. It certainly has been their day. A very team review. The standouts uh, of our team were definitely Joe Riley, our right back, insanely reliable, fast, uh, making constant runs, but smart runs, very good defensively as well. 45 games, one goal, five assists. Then Shane McCartan, always making an impact of the bench uh, or starting on the wing, very fast, scored pretty important goals, 45 games, 8 goals, 8 assists. As well as Omari Patrick, saved us many games in the mid part of the season, but was dropping off a little towards the end. 30 games, 8 goals, 6 assists. Ryan Yates, disappointed a little bit with what I was expecting of him. Uh, which was stabilizing the midfield, but it was very important nonetheless for us. And then actually became quite a scorer. 45 games, 8 goals, 3 assists. Tahi Chung and James Wogan, both exceptional uh, at times, but invisible in the others. Chung, 30 games, 9 goals, 8 assists, and Wogan, 38 games, 22 goals, 8 assists. Charles Ambi, mostly invisible, 37 games, 8 goals, 6 assists. And don't be fooled by these numbers, they are pretty same but my ratings are pretty different of each of the players but a lot of them were starting and didn't deliver as much as the people coming off the bench and also the people from the bench had low ratings so they def definitely overperformed. And again, you can see how many times they were subbed in the spreadsheet below. Two big growers I have to mention are Felix Mecca and Neil O'Grady, both growing 7 overall. They were pretty good for the most part, but had their games off and quite low stamina, so they couldn't play uh, all the games and all the length of the games. Mecca 40 games, 12 goals, 9 assists, and O'Grady 29 games, 11 goals, 4 assists. And last but not least, our youngsters, most notably Eamon Murphy, who, even if he looks pretty average on the first glance, is a pretty creative player and tenacious, has great free kicks, and I really believe he has a future in this club, uh, despite his uh, lower potential uh, as a rotation player. With League One secured, we signed two players on pre-contracts, uh, Ronan Cortes from Portsmouth to improve our rocking left side, 
with Abby not being consistent enough and uh, McCartan not having enough potential in the future and Devante Cole who some of you might know from the past having pretty high potential not anymore but he's still fast and he's gonna provide a different option to Vaughan at the start of the transfer window two planned acquisitions came in Brazilian center back Lucas Ribeiro from Hoffenheim who is a pretty good passer for center back and also 6 foot 3 and CDM uh, Christian Nunes from Velez Sarsfield to sort of future proof the position in our team. Uh, I'm not gonna show much from uh, the preseason because it's not really important. We drew two games uh, in the group and somehow got all the way in the final where we lost to 10 men so show. So we got about uh, one and a half million which is still pretty good but because we didn't score enough goals in the tournament and I went a little ham and bought another striker and that striker is uh, Jesus Ferreira from Malaga for 2.3 million. His stats kind of remind me of Aguero. He's fast but strong, a lot of stamina also, uh, very good positioning. We started the league off pretty poorly, losing to the favorites of the league Charlton 3-1 after two big mistakes by me to be honest, like throwing the ball to the striker twice, that's unexcusable. But then losing to Peterborough as well. We also drew the two following games and after beating Southend on penalties in the League Cup we fell to Norwich at the end of August. At this point a great offer came in for our starting centre back uh, Richard Everton and him being 28 I thought we are not gonna get a better offer in the future so I took it. But of course because we conceded 11 goals up, up until now in 6 matches we definitely needed a strength in that position already. And that's why we bought Cedric Capri to stabilize our defense. Uh, 70 rated center back, so way above any anyone else from our team. And that is where we started to pick up some wins and climb up to the table. We are watching our 7-1 uh, win against Bristol Rovers. O'Grady scored hat-trick that game from the center attacking midfielder position and with rotation squad around him. And it just showed that that's gonna be probably his final position and the rotation squad that played that game is actually our uh, cup squad for all the cup games especially the EFL trophy games where so far they scored 10 goals and considered only one in four matches and talking about our players Curtis proved himself to be very reliable on the left side and saved us a lot of games and scored five goals in the first five wins so now you know pretty much everything important that happened up until now. Here are our league games. Uh, we lost only once so far in the league and currently we are third in the table. And now I'm finally here with you live and there is one more thing that I have to tell you and that is that there was an offer made for uh, Tai Chung and I accepted it already. You can see 7 million for an underperforming more or less player uh it was a pretty generous offer even compared to his trading value so i think it was pretty fair even looking at his stats there is not much to see he only started playing better after uh, we sold him so uh even half those stats don't really belong there and we will be definitely bringing uh someone on the right in the answer window especially this guy is who i'm thinking about jake hasty um, he's not the fastest, but I mean, he has some pace in him, but I, th I think he could be pretty good. You can, you can leave me a comment uh, below uh, about if you have any other ideas than this place that I have here. Maybe some of these would be better. Maybe this guy, I don't know. This guy looks expensive. I don't think we can afford him. Oh, he has a release cost actually. Mm, that's, that's interesting. You can't get the reverse cost. Hmm. Well, let me comment below and, you know, I can think about your opinions. Oh, Scout is back on Ben Close. I don't think I want to rob Portsmouth of even more players. Now that I took his, their best uh, midfielder, I don't want to take their best uh, center mid as well. Mm, I don't know about that brother. He'll be back, but it will, take a, it will actually take a while. So in case you didn't notice, we are at the end of December. We have one game before... January uh, which looks pretty calm which is unusual for January I suspect there is gonna be one more cup game somewhere like here after we 
win if you win against Gunthrop. So today we're just gonna play this one game and move somewhere before this game and uh yeah next next episode is gonna be the full month of january including transfers oh wow curtis and mecca and the eights are all 70 now i swear they had to grow like just now and Venus as well so this is our squad chung is on the bench for his last game uh for us and this season we've beat portsmouth twice uh it was i think 2-0 in the league and 1-0 in the cup so Rossi Harik is now at home. Ooh, okay, that was clean. Big pitch on a perfect day in this stadium. Alan Smith alongside me, Martin Tyler. And our football today is from the EFL League One, Bradford City against Portsmouth. Thank you. You know, Portsmouth is my favorite opponent actually because I used to play Portsmouth a lot uh, after they went down uh, in FIFA and like tried to get them back. To the, uh, to the Premier League, where they belong, in my opinion. I did not actually check their lineup. I'm not sure if they, how strong players are they playing. Ooh, that was, that was tough. Ooh. Oof, that was, that was kind of dangerous. Yellow for that? Are you kidding me? I'm not gonna lie. I haven't played much in, in this past month, so. It's gonna be a really tough game, but hopefully we can win. Because I really wanna stay at the top of the table. Oh no, that that was not a foul, what? Oh my god. I was just trying to pass the ball. Oh no. Quickly. Get someone to the post. Ah! Oh my god. There is no way. Oh, if I just ran with Curtis right from the start to the, to the post, <laughs> I would be there in time. <sighs> oh, that was, a... yeah. I just overran the the line and then I was coming back and oh my god. Okay, this this game is gonna be really tough. I wanna see. Wait, I wanna see the free kick though, like the whole, whole thing, because because I moved Curtis, that it was really easy to just shoot right there. Yeah, I screwed that up. Actually, it went over. Yeah, but that would be that would be clean, clean clearance there. I have to up the energy because we haven't even got to the shot, to any shot. Ooh, goal! Come on! Oof! Nice, nice effort there. It was never gonna be go low, to be honest. Okay. Nice run. Oof. Okay. Good shot though. Can we get the ball back? No. Press, 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 press. Careful. Oof. Okay, we have to be much more aggressive in the defending. Cross can get over. Okay. Great stop. One half. I have to be really careful with my pressing because sometimes I'm, I'm very aggressive and now that Cortez has a yellow. Oh no. What? <laughs> yep, that was a oh shit first half from us. Oh, nice block pass from Riley. Goal run, okay. Maybe no. Maybe Neka? No. Block cross. Can never make the final pass this game. It's always blocked. Uh, look at the pressing. Look at look how high their forwards are. It's crazy. Okay, it's time for a sub. And you know what? I I'll put Chung on for Curtis. Maybe this is his game to show he really cares about this club. Press. Press! Yes, 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 yes! Oh no, don't lose the ball! Oh my god! Lose the ball every single time! Oof! Great save! The personal players are just motivated insane amounts. Look at, look at the sliding tackle! You really care! 
like my players except Cole maybe oh great great execution wow I actually didn't expect he would he would like even score this game <laughs> there was no way he would score unless unless he uh, lost the defender and I I used the uh, what's it called the placed shot button whatever that I thought is really bad this, uh, in in FIFA 20 but somehow it worked this time okay let's now that he got a, an assist let's send Anderson on yeah I, I kind of lied to him <laughs> he, he did the, get the action when he wanted it press oh Oh shit. Yeah, that's, that's what happens when the pressing doesn't work. <laughs> Whew. Oh no. Don't. Uh, stop losing. How are we losing the ball so much? Uh, oh my god. <sighs> yeah, that was definitely my fault as well. Yeah, this pass was just deadly and just try to slide in but yeah doesn't help Ben Close the guy who whose uh, contract is running out but wonder what can we even do now I don't think better is gonna help maybe Moraes our uh, youth academy player we don't even know him but he's not he's not that fast so I don't think yeah we don't have any game changer now I think this is the only option. Sadly, we don't have uh, upgrade or or Abi. Ooh, but we need to get the ball first. Oh my god! Nice, 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 nice. I ran someone. Ooh, okay. What about some trick? Oof! Ah! No, 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 no! Come on! Let's send the ball here. Anderson! Oh! Oh my god! <laughs> what the hell just happened? <laughs> wow! Okay, I mean, I will take it, but the plant is there from the keeper. After Anderson shot, got. Uh, oh, okay, he got, he got deflected by a person of player, and then another player stood in front of the keeper and poked it with his hands. The right to go, oh my god. That, that's some luck right there. I'm just sad we couldn't use uh, Curtis very much this game at all because of the yellow card at the start. Press, 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 get the ball from him. No. So in the end, it was pretty lucky we even got the point, but you know, before the game, uh, it's, it's still a, a loss of two points. Because we should be winning this. By the way, there you can see that Chong really doesn't do much difference. So uh, it's not it's not that big of a deal that he got sold. Oh, that's our future goalkeeper. He doesn't. He looks like he doesn't know about it, but he's actually only one over or less than our starting goalkeeper, and definitely gonna be probably starter for us last the next season. So I mean, I'm proud of him already, and now he's. Finally 63. So that will be it for this episode. We have Scantrop coming up as the first match the next time we see each other and and also two youth scouts are gonna be coming back. So there's gonna be a lot to do next time. Uh, but up until then, I've been Ralph. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe and share the video if you did. And I'll see you next time.